Welcome back to the trucking journey. I'm Trucker Jim coming to you from the Keep On Trucking Studios and this is a special video. We're not out on the road trucking today. We're talking about Uncle John. Unfortunately, I didn't make this video while Uncle John was still alive. So he's not going to get an opportunity to see it unless they, they have YouTube in heaven. So if you're out there, Uncle John, realize that you had an impact on my life. Uncle John, he passed away back in October of 2019. Uh, he was living in Orlando with, with Aunt Phyllis, which was by his side every step of the way. Well, in January of 2020, Phyllis came up for a visit, so Facebook messages and everything were sent out letting everyone know, and we pulled a get-together together in, in a matter of just a few weeks, and we're going to have a, a life celebration of Uncle John and then have a nice lunch that everybody brought a dish. There was a lot of desserts there, by the way. <laughs> it wasn't exactly a keto day for Trucker Jim, but what a day it, it was. Just a... Uh, taking the time with, with family to reflect on the life of Uncle John. And I'm going to share some of that with you today. But the story begins back in the 1800s when a stranger wandered into town, into Abbeville, South Carolina. We don't know a whole lot about him. We think he came from Georgia, but his last name was Davis. And then he met a girl, a Horton girl. Soon they were married, had a place outside of town, but there were the 10 children that came from that. I believe my papa, John Robert Davis Sr., was the oldest. If, if I'm wrong on that, correct me in the comments, family, but, but I think I'm telling you right. There was 10 of them, and they were a close... They were a close group. I've, I've heard them talking before about how their parents spoiled them. Now, they were dirt poor, okay? It, no, they were spoiled with time and, and love. But that was one of the things that came up at, at a get-together that I thought was pretty cool. That couple produced my papa, John. And he was always curious in nature. That, that's a common trait for anyone that's perceived as intelligence. Intelligent? They're a curious person. He was always a reader. There's even a story about how he built a radio in his bedroom back in the <laughs> 1900s sometimes. But he met my granny, Madge McDowell, which was, there's a story behind her as well, was considered the miracle baby of the family. And you're like, why did they call her the miracle baby, Jim? Well, the reason was her, her father, John McDowell, was in a farming accident that ripped his arm off and, well, he bled to death, leaving a wife and nine children, which was just tragedy at, at the time. But people pulled together and they made it through. And, well, a few months later, my great-grandmother realized she was pregnant. They thought that was, you know, extremely special. She was the baby girl of the family, obviously, but she was always well taken care of by, I think there was maybe nine, nine of them, and she was the 10th or, or the 11th. They had bigger families generally than we do today, but they met, I believe it was at a church event. That's kind of where people met back in those days. And, well, after World War II was over, they spent time in South America. That'll be a story for another video. But they came home, well, came and settled in the home that we call the old home place now. Shortly thereafter, John Robert was born. And, well, it took a few chances before they got the little girl that they were seeking. But soon there was John Robert, Carl, James Earl, Henry, and baby girl Nancy. After John Robert graduated high school, he left for the Air Force. And his MOS was intelligence. Now at this point in the story, there's a lot of things I don't know because Uncle John had a top secret clearance. Now before the days of in the, the desert of Nevada and New Mexico and that side of the story, during the Vietnam era, several of my Uncle John's cousins, Sammy and Danny, were in Vietnam. 
Uncle John, he was stationed in Okinawa. Well, my Uncle Sammy Luke, well, I call him my uncles, but I, I guess he's technically a second cousin, but Sammy had told the story that, well, he got injured while in Vietnam. What we call an IED today, what they called a booby trap back in there, exploded and severely injured him on his right hand side. Here's a picture of him receiving the Purple Heart. This is in in Vietnam, but the recovery time what was two or three months long. This was back in 1970, but Sammy was sent to a hospital in Japan to recover from his wounds. There was talk about removing his leg and you know, it, it was extensive. And during that time, you know, injured from a war in a foreign land with no one you know and I, I don't know how well the English the nurses and, and stuff spoke it was a very tough time for Sam and I'm sure he was having some dark thoughts but then one day in Japan Sammy felt a tap on his leg opened his eyes looked up and it was his cousin John Robert and, and they talked, you know, for, for a minute. And can you imagine how happy Sam was to see a familiar face, his cousin? Well, John had found out about Sammy getting injured, did some checking. So he had to do some traveling to get there, but popped in to play, you know, Sammy a surprise visit. And he, and he said, here, get in the wheelchair. I'm taking you out for a steak dinner. They were in Japan, so it's probably like a Kobe beef steak. Sam said it was the best steak he's ever had. But John, he did things like that. After John left Okinawa, he spent time in Washington, D.C. And that's where him and Aunt Phyllis met. Phyllis was working for the FBI in a clerical position and one of John's good buddies was dating Phyllis's roommate. So, you know, that's how, how they met. Once they started dating, it was a wrap. They were married soon after that. Projects John did share a little bit about you know, he had a top secret clearance. So, you know, anytime he would, would come home, I was always asking, hey, Uncle John, what's the deal with UFOs and aliens? Is it real? And well, he would never answer that question, but he did work in the development of the stealth bomber. He did work in the development of the first unmanned drone. John had an impressive military career that I don't know a whole lot about, but he retired as a chief master sergeant in the Air Force. Boom! There's a lot about John's work he could not share with any of us. Like he would never answer the UFO and the aliens question. <laughs> but what he did let us know that he took part in the development of the stealth bomber uh, back in the 80s. I remember him talking to my dad and Uncle Carl about satellites that were in space that the camera was so good on them they could zoom down from space and tell the time on a person's watch. And this was in the late 80s. John had retired from the Air Force in 1985 and then started a, a career with the Civil Service. Once again, top secret. So I don't know what that was, but he wouldn't admit to the UFOs and aliens. But he lived out in Albuquerque, New Mexico. But even though Uncle John had all of this top secret career stuff going on, he came back to Abbeville regularly. Every other Christmas and sometimes during the summer, there would be times him and Phyllis would ride a motorcycle from New Mexico home. He had gold wings. Uh, later on, he ended up getting BMWs. And then, then after that, he had a Porsche for a while and was in motorcycle clubs, Porsche clubs. But it was always exciting when Uncle John was in town.
And that's just a little bit of the life and story, the legend of my Uncle John. But if you have a story you'd like to share about John, please feel free to leave a comment below. One of the comments that I got on Facebook about John was from one of his military friends, John Force. You know, there's a lot of Johns in, in the world, right? Most of you probably have an Uncle John as well. But John Ford told the story that they used to watch um, you know, football and sports and there was a delay. So whenever you'd be watching the game, you would already know what the, the final score was because you would hear it on the radio and things. <laughs> Phyllis didn't seem to know that at, at the time because John, they lived in the same neighborhood. He, he called John Hassa, which that's Korean for sergeant because one of the first things John did when joining the Air Force is learn Korean, which is pretty cool. That's top secret. But anyway, one day he, John Ford was walking through the neighborhood and saw Phyllis out washing the car. And he thought that was strange because, you know, John usually takes care of things like that. And uh, Phyllis told him that her and John had made a bet on the football game. And John won and, you know, they'd bet, you know, washing the car. And, well, John Ford said he didn't have the heart to tell <laughs> Phyllis and John already knew the score of it. But if anyone else has any stories they'd like to share about John Robert, please feel free to leave the comments below. Just want to say a special word to Aunt Phyllis. You always have been and always will be a part of our family. We love you. Hope to see you again soon. If anybody in the family uh, thinks it would be kind of neat to maybe put a, a few more of these type of family educational videos together. Hey, I've got the camera and I can do the editing. Just get in touch. I'll see you at the next family reunion. But thank you all for watching and thank you Uncle John for the example you set for us all. One of the things that really stood out in our family is, well John and Phyllis, they gave, always gave the best Christmas gifts. There was always thought that, that was put into them that would give enhancement for our lives, whether it was a jacket or barnacles they used to get for Chase and he'd put them together real fast. And I, and I know the nieces have a lot of stories as well. But I, I feel real honored and privileged in having an, an example in the family. I can't tell you how many times I've told the story about Area 51 and the stealth bomber and everything. But thanks everyone for watching. This video is a wrap and well, we'll see you in the next one. But until then, be safe out there and keep on trucking.